So wait, let me try to get this straight, Paul. Because maybe I'm missing the point you're doing right now. Are you trying to tell me that the Bills in this draft are going to get a linebacker? Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, they need one, right? Oh, my God. So Sell me on this. Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. So when you take a look at the at the linebacker group across, right? So a lot of people are like, well, you know, you got Jermaine Edmonds, you got Matt Milano. What do you mean we need to invest a pick in the linebacker group? Well, you're also planning on Lorenzo Alexander being a strong side linebacker. Right? The truth is you probably need to start looking to get younger at that position. So uh, you're at nine, right? Could you grab a linebacker at nine? I mean, I suppose you could, right? But hmm. could the Bills trade back in at the back end of the first round to grab a strong side linebacker and get another starter on this defense? There are absolutely players to do that. Um, and there's a couple guys that they might target to do that. Of course, there's a bunch of names at the top of the draft, but there's some guys that could be available in the middle to the end of the, end of the first round that uh, would solve a lot of problems for the Bills. Um, but it's a, at that same position, that strong linebacker position, so, Mario, I, w- I want you to kind of explain a little bit as far as what that position, like, position responsibilities often are. Oh, Sam Strong, side linebacker. Um, obviously, he goes to the strength of the call. He's, he's mainly your run-stopping guy at the point of attack. Uh, he's sometimes your guy that will come off the corner for a blitz. As we talked about, uh, a lot of things that go on with the linebacking core. Uh, the weak side linebacker is more of a cutback guy. He's the guy who's got to be in that lane majority of the time. Um, as far as that goes, though, I think I want to kind of disagree with you on your point. And we talked about it a little bit on the, on the, on the feed on uh, Saturday night. It was one of those things where maybe the Bills haven't addressed that position, and it's not something that they've – it's not like the wide receiver position prior to 2018 where they just didn't address it and said, okay, here's what we got. <laughs> here's this is going to be fun. Um, I think it's one of those things where they're going to probably go heavy in the secondary and have those guys come down, you know, as far as, um, you know, a Micah Hyde or a a Jordan Poirier come down in the box. And, okay, if the tight end leaks out, he leaks out, you got him. But what they can do with that is if they have multiple defensive backs in, they can give it a look as far as a nickel coverage look, but play their base 4-3 and have one of the safeties you know, we saw it last year a little bit too. Sometimes with Raphael Bush, he'd come down in the box because he he's stronger playing against the run than he is against the pass. I think a lot of Bills fans will agree with that. But in that in that scenario, I think with Matt Milano getting hurt, they had to use Hyde and Poyer as that extra linebacker in the box sometimes, and I think that opened up their eyes to say, "Whoa, wait a minute, maybe we don't really need to go." that hard for a linebacker coming up in 2019, even though we may need a couple because they got, they got a bunch of linebackers on the team right now. I mean, sure. none of them are clear cut. Number one starters, the more special teams guys. However, you need, you need a, you need a Sanford for about four or five plays, 10 plays a game. Okay. That'll, that'll suffice. That'll be enough. You know what I mean? So, I, maybe they're not addressing the position because they don't feel like they need to. But there are some studs if the Bills chose that route. Now, you're in a division now, okay, with Sam Darnold, um, Tom Brady, and a Rubbermaid basket down in uh, <laughs> no. Fitzmagic is down there. Fitzmagic is down there. So, But yeah. they're, they're more than likely going to pick up a quarterback yeah. in this "Quote unquote," been overblown. This phrase has been overused. Passing league. What do you think is the likelihood that they think that they're going to be going three linebackers a lot? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you. You end up playing sub packages most of the time, right? So you, you're in a base defense now, and half half as much as you used to be. Right? Mm-hmm. You're often in sub packages nowadays. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's really what happens, right? You, you team runs out four wide. You're gonna you're going nickel, right? Because yeah. you don't you don't want a linebacker covering those guys. You yeah. don't want a linebacker covering a slot receiver. 
So it is something that uh, that you see, and that you know, it, it's almost something like you know how reverse psychology is always out there. It's almost like the Patriots went with those heavy sets as often as they did because teams don't play base anymore, right? Yeah. Maybe maybe base is the weakness now, right? Talk about oh four threes, you know, perfect four three defensive linemen or whatever the case may be. But teams play so much sub package now that you know you go. You go twenty-one personnel. You you go heavy. You go like those guys. Those those reps may not be as practiced anymore. Well, yeah, I I remember ten years ago, <clears throat> edge rusher wasn't a position on right. the field. It was an outside linebacker or a defensive end. Yep. You're not. An, oh, I'm an edge rusher. Okay. You named aptly named somebody a rusher because you pass so much in the NFL right now, and I think yep. because of that, because so many teams are equipping their offenses to throw, not many guys are really ideally suited to defend the run, which is, I mean, if you got yeah. Ivory Gore and McCoy, you seem to be winning in that battle because those defenses aren't, aren't really built for that. Um, it seems like the more and more that we talk about it and more and more the years go on, the NFL is turning into the Big, big Ten or the Big 12, I mean. <laughs> hey, we're going to throw yeah. about 65 times a game and right. everyone's going to be pass blocking. So. Um, yeah, it's it, it's it's probably the likelihood that the Bills are trying to conform with the times now instead of just having all of those base packages, and they're going to say, listen, we're going to go heavy after some safeties, maybe some cornerbacks, and we're going to probably play five or six deep. Guys that can that are physical, that can play the run, that can come up and tackle, and also that can cover guys. So when you're seeing teams that go three wide, four wide, uh, three wide in the tight end and whatnot, very rarely will they have two backs in the game. So why do you have to have that many linebackers? You know? Right. So Right. And and really one thing that ends up happening now is you, know, you look at the Bills and they do have a need at that strong side linebacker position. Yeah. But um, you know, the role of a strong side a will is just simply more important in today's NFL because you're not looking at coming your will out. Right? Yeah. Because when you're in sub packages you will you will stay in. Right? Yeah. Because that's primarily you know, their, their role and the responsibility of the position. Like, you look at Milano. Milano's staying on the field yeah. in some packages, right? So, when you start looking at this draft and, and people start talking about the linebackers, I'm not in love with this linebacker. I'm really not. People talk about, um, you know, Devin White, Devin Bush. Um, I, one, I, I don't see fits for the Bills either, this way, right? Mm-hmm. But even with that being said, I'm not in love with them as players anyway. Right? So, one thing that you have to understand when you start talking about, uh, you know, the linebacker need for the Bills, uh, both Devin White and Devin Bush, neither of them are over six foot, right? Not saying no. that you have to be huge to play linebacker, but they're both relatively small compared to some of these monstrous linebackers that you've seen taken in, for, in the first round. Um, they're, but they're both mad fast. Like, Devin White put up a 4 4. That's 40th. ridiculous. That is yeah. And you know what? I think customarily, the, the two systems that they play in, I think they play in three fours. Right. Three four systems. And now, if you go into the pro game, that if you have speed, they'll find a spot for you. It doesn't really matter. Exactly. Um, yeah. we, we talked about guys that have incredible seat, speed, such as Telvin Smith. You know, Bobby Wagner has ridiculous speed, you know, at, at the linebacker position. Um, it, it could be one of those scenarios where, um, like you said, Milano's on the field all the time. Sometimes Milano's in the middle. You know, are these guys going to be a fit with the Bills? And, you know, are, are either of those guys a Milano type of linebacker? Um, how disciplined will they be? I mean, we talked about it last, last year's draft. We were, we were confused that the Bears went with Roquan Smith. You know, he's an undersized linebacker, but played mainly in a I – think, I think he played in a 4-3 and was going to a 3-4 where guards would have free reign on him. Um, right. They get a free release to come at the linebacker, and he's undersized. And, you know, I, I don't remember hearing his name too much this past season, you know, as far as rookie of the year candidate or anything like that. So, And, and they end up going 12-4. and four. How did your starting middle linebacker get no publicity in Chicago and your team goes 12-4? and four? I don't understand yeah. that. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's a great point. And I think a lot of times when you start looking at, you know, how these players are going to rate out in the draft, you can't you can't let speed be the sole thing that he's grading out on a linebacker. And that's oh, yeah. what you see with Devin Bush and Devin White. They both ran four fours, you know. So 
it's to me when you start looking at like Devin Bush as an example is absolutely going to be available to the Bills. They're going to pass on him because he's a, he's a typical Will linebacker, mm-hmm. five foot eleven. He doesn't take great angles. He gets a little sticky, he's a little undersized, but he's fast, right? Mm-hmm. So he, he can make up for make up for lost ground on a bad read. If you thought Tremaine Edmonds, if Tremaine Edmonds drove you nuts with his play <laughs> recognition, then Devin White is going to drive you insane because he he and Edmonds both get caught very similar, right? Yes. Uh, but again, they're so fast that at the college level, they can make up for a lot. Of oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, so you have to be very very careful when you start talking about the speed linebackers, right? So when the Bills are looking at whom they're going to bring in to try and rotate in for that strong side linebacker position or really any linebacker position. You have to look at versatility, yeah. right? Guys who are going to play special teams. Who are guys that are going to be able to come in and contribute on special teams and are going to be able to sub in and play linebacker, right? Yeah. Um, I don't kn- I don't know if the Bills are really looking for a starter at Sam right now. I think they're probably looking for somebody who can come in and bang some heads on special teams and that's going to be you know, that's going to be what they need. They need somebody who's going to be able to contribute on that on that line of the ball. And uh, there's two guys that I think are really going to fit into that that the Bills could grab um, later. And I'm talking like third. Re- I realistically should be third round pick. Right? I'm not in love with the outside back group. These guys could get overdrafted just by, you know, the, the talent of the position. You know, you see this stuff happen all the time. Yeah. But there's two players um, that you could see Bills uh, try and target for that, and one of them is Terrell Hanks on the New Mexico State, six yeah. two. Um, so he kind of fits the profile a little bit of what you're looking for. A yeah. bigger linebacker compared to the frame of the other guys. Um, he, from from the things that I've heard, he's a little bit of a handful. Um, <laughs> but but um, he could be a dangerous pass rusher, right? And if okay. you're looking at Sam. I mean, that's really what you're looking for. Right? Yeah. You're looking for somebody who's going to be able to come in and get a little physical, and he can do that for you, right? Yeah. Um, again, he's a core special teams player. So that's one of his strengths. This guy was a big-time special teams player for the Mexico team. So that could fly him up draft board of, of the team. The other guy is somebody whom uh, I'm going to laugh at the whole draft because it's an absolutely ridiculous name. Uh, and it is Ben Burr Kerbin. God bless you. Yeah, I know, right? Another undersized linebacker. He's only six foot tall. Uh, hands, not even nine inch hands. Tiny hands. Poor guy. Right? <laughs> I know, right? But he's at, from Washington. Why are all these defenders from Washington so heralded? Well, like, every year we talk about a cornerback from Washington being like one of the top three corners. Why is why are there so many defenders from Washington? I'll tell you two things, Paul. Number one, he plays in the Pac-12. Okay. I think about 95% of the, the offenses that are there at the Pac-12 play against pro style. Yeah. Or they play a pro style offense. So these guys are used to going through their reads on defense just as the offense are used to going through their reads. Um, but, and the other thing, too, is those games don't even come on until like 10 o'clock at night. So any of those really serious scouts that are really serious about finding talent in the Pac-12, you know, they're going to be up late watching those games. Not many, not many primetime games – if. If your name isn't USC <laughs> or Stanford, you don't really get yeah. any prime time games being a Pac-12 team. So a lot of those teams that – I mean, I used to love watching <clears> – I used to love watching those games at night because, like, you, you'd find talent and you talk to somebody else about it. You'd be like, hey, did you see the game with so-and-so? And they're like, who's that? They're like, what? You know, Foles came from there. Gronk came from there. I mean, those are some guys that got swept under the rug. I mean – would Gronk be a – what was he, a second-round pick? Third. Third? Third-round pick. Yeah. I mean, come on. Really? Um, and Terrell I think Troop it, was taken right before him. Yeah. Don't tell me that again. I already know that. <laughs> I knew – I just knew around it was. But uh, you start to see all those guys come out of there because um, they, see, they seem to fit in two categories with the linebackers that are coming out now. It's like they're amazing athletes, but their techniques are weak. Or – they have all the technique in the world, but can they adjust to the pro speed of the game? Um, right. And so that's what we're seeing. We're seeing those guys from Washington who just aren't as fast as a lot of those SEC guys. However, they're very technically sound, which is why they're more heralded because they can come in and start right away. 
And right. say, okay, a year under his belt, maybe he, he can get adjusted to the speed. And then you have these other guys from the SEC on the East Coast, the ACC, and all those guys that say, hey, listen, they're, these guys are blazing speed. They're tremendous athletes. But um, if there's a play-action play, he's going to get caught. They're going to throw passes over the middle all day. So that's where the, the, the battle comes in with those two types of linebackers. You talk about West Coast and East Coast as far as that goes. So. And getting specific to, to Burr Kerman, uh, this guy is your typical Patriots linebacker. Oh, stop right? it. Lightning, lightning fast IQ process. Probably the best eyes at the linebacker position. Oh, no. Right? He's everything really well. He's only six foot tall. Um, there, but he's always around the football. But he is the Rudy of linebackers, right? He's not fast, but mm. he just he gets it, right? The game plays slower for him. Uh, because his yeah. eyes help him out a lot. And he plays with that really high football IQ. Man, that fixes a lot of problems. You don't have to be the strongest. You don't have to be the fastest if you can get yourself in the right spot all the time. Well, the thing that worries me about him, or not so much him, but the other, the first two guys you mentioned, uh, White and Bush, they have all Americans around them. Yeah. They have all Americans all around yeah. them. So I don't, I don't think um, Gunzuntite or Burr Kervin, whatever the heck you call them. No, I was kidding. Um, I don't think he has a lot of all Americans around him. So therefore, he's making every play, and he's flying all around the field. And he, because he was delegated that responsibility when he first got there, probably and he's been processing that all the time. You look at some of these other teams: LSU, Alabama, Florida, all these guys. They have all Americans all around them. <laughs> okay, I got. You know, if <laughs> who's who's the manimal from Alabama defensive tackle? Like, like there's only one. You know, if I was playing, if he was in front of me, I'd be an all-American linebacker too. Well, you know, when you start looking at, <clears throat> you, if let's say you draft Devin White, are you asking Devin White to play special teams? Nope. Nope. You're not asking Devin White to play special teams. At nine? No. No. No, exactly. God, no. Exactly. Um, and the Bills are in a precarious situation because while they have the draft capital to address really any need at any time, yeah. um, I don't think they have any interest in the linebackers at the top of the draft, and I think they're going to start having to scrape the barrel in the second, third, fourth round to try and get some more depth for the special teams unit and try and find a rotational linebacker that come in and play Sam and, and be effective. Um, you know, it's it's a need that they have to fill. They have to fill it. Because they didn't fill it in free agent. They have to address it at some point. Um, and they must feel comfortable with the depth in the draft on some level to not have addressed that position in free agency because they took no short road in trying to address the offense. They didn't. They just brought in a bunch no, of guys. No, You know, it's, it's a very different approach. Well, I think what, what's ultimately going to happen is you can, you can connect all the dots, and we talked about it all the time. They brought in these – they brought on a lineman from New England. They brought in a lineman from the Jets. They brought in a lineman from Washington. They brought in a lineman from the Raiders. Those are teams that realistically had some trouble with their cap. With the exception of the Jets, because they were just spending it right. hand over fist. Those other teams were having trouble with their cap. Maybe, and a lot of the offensive linemen that they visited at the certain colleges that they were at, maybe they're talking to those guys to say, hey, listen, what kind of defenders did you go up against in practice that were kind of a pain in the ass? Mm -hmm. And you had trouble blocking. You had trouble with this. And you said it. they may not have, may not have addressed it in free agency. And I'll add the... Dot, 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 yet. After the right. draft's over, they may sign a couple of those guys off of their practice squads, or not at the practice squads because the roster is still at 90, but you know what I mean. They might sign a couple of guys, a, couple, a linebacker from the Jets, a linebacker from the Patriots, you know, a linebacker from, uh, they visited Bryce Love, so they get a linebacker from Stanford as a free agent signing. You know what I mean? So that may that may come to fruition. They may get their linebackers. They're just, they're just more comfortable saying, hey, we've got a lot of options at linebacker. We don't have to waste a draft pick on it. So... Yeah, it's really interesting, man. It's can I tell you how refreshing it is to have no idea what the Bills are going to do, <laughs> right? Isn't that weird to say? I just love not being able, not looking in the quarterback rearview mirror. Finally, last year was so stressful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, I thought starting the season when Nate Peterman was bad enough, oh. boy, the, the, the things go downhill from there. He said like, the oh, P-word. It get much worse, and then, oh, yeah, it got a lot worse. He said the P-word. How dare you? <laughs> oh, 
Bye.